Hi everyone, welcome back to the series. In the last episode, which I think was long enough to be a feature length film, we decided to create all of our menus and add all that functionality in there as well. In this video, we're going to get started with uh, audio. So the key thing that we're going to want to take away from this episode is we're going to want a single audio master script that's going to be responsible for controlling all of our audio. So this one shouldn't be too difficult, so let's just jump straight into it. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and created an audio folder and inside I've got some sound effects. Now I'll put a link into the description where I got all these sound effects. It's one single packet and it's chock full of about 500 different sound effects. So I went through and I've picked all my favourites and I've renamed them for my actual purpose. So we'll try and get as many of these in use as we can in this video. But obviously certain ones, such as a shop error and shop purchase, we're not going to be able to do just yet because we don't have a shop. Okay, so what's the first thing we're going to want to do? We're going to open up our scripts and we're going to create an audio manager. We'll open this up in Visual Studio and we'll start by taking a think of what we need in this. Well, we're obviously only going to need one audio manager, so again, this is going to be a singleton. And I'll say it again, if you want a more in-depth look into singletons, I do have a singletons tutorial on my channel, make sure you check that out. But all we're going to do is we're going to make a private static audio manager, and we'll call this instance. And in our awake, we'll check if instance is equal to null. We'll set instance equal to this, or else will destroy the game object. As simple as that. So what else are we going to need in here? Well, the audio manager is obviously going to be controlling whether or not we're muted or not. So we can add a private bool muted in here. We're also going to take advantage of having two separate audio sources. One for our battle music, the music that increases in speed the less enemies you have on screen, and another one that'll take control of our sound effects. So we'll make these public, so we'll have a public audio source and we'll call this battle music source and another public audio source sound effects source. We're also going to want to make some private variables. So we'll have a private bool and this we're going to call is playing. And what that's going to do is that's going to control whether or not a battle music source is actually playing. So when we're not in game, we don't have that sound effect. And we also want a private float of our delay. Now the delay is going to be the delay in between that sound effect, the battle music sound effect. So we'll be able to decrease that, in essence, making that sound effect play a lot faster. And one final variable, we're going to need a private constant float. And this is going to be our delay tick. And we're going to set this to 0.05. This is going to be very similar to the way that we speed up the enemy movement the less enemies are on screen. So if you remember how we did that, you're probably going to know what I'm going to do with that delay tick. So let's start off by defining our methods. Well, we know we're going to need the start method, so we'll put that back in. We're going to want a public void toggle mute. So that will be hooked up to a mute button on the main menu. We're also going to, going to want a public static void play battle music. And the corresponding public static void stop battle music. I put player battle music there. Player battle music. We're also going to want a public static void play sound effect. And this is going to take in an audio clip that we'll call clip. Another, we're going to want a public static void update battle music delay. And this is going to take in an integer, which we'll call i. And the integer that we're going to pass in is going to be the amount of enemies we have left on screen. 
and we're going to use that to determine how fast that music should be playing. And one final, we're going to make a private IE numerator, so we're going to use a core routine. So we're going to need to be using system.collections. And this is actually going to be responsible for looping that battle sound effect. So we'll just call that battle sound. So let's start filling in all of these methods. We'll start with the start method. So all we're going to do in here, we're going to check whether or not the player wants the game to be muted. And we're going to want this to persist in between all of our sessions. So first thing we'll do, we'll set a muted boolean to playerprefs dot get int and we'll call our muted player pref muted now obviously you can't convert a integer into a boolean so what we'll do we'll check whether or not that integer is equal to one if it's equal to one we're going to be muted so then we can check if we are muted we'll set our audio listener dot paused equal to true that's pause, not paused. So just like that, we're controlling whether or not we're muted from the second we start the game. So what about when we want to toggle our mute? Well, we can set muted equal to the opposite of muted. And then check again. If we are muted, we'll use playerprefs.setInt. And we'll set muted equal to 1. Or else, if we're not muted, we'll set playerprefs dot set int muted equal to zero. And then, as a final check, if we are muted, we'll pause that audio listener again. And just like that, we are now able to toggle our game's audio on and off. So, what about if we want to play? Battle music. Well, we could, with this being static, we'll be able to call this from wherever we like. So all we actually need to do in here is set instance dot is playing equal to oops yeah instance dot playing equal to true and instance dot start core routine and we'll start our instance dot battle sounds. As simple as that. And then if we want to stop our battle music, we'll set this to false and we'll stop the core routine battle sound. Told you this one's going to be very simple. Next up, we just want to play whatever sound effect we pass in. So this time, we can just do a quick sanity check. So if we're not muted, then we'll try and play the sound. We'll use instant start sound effect source and we'll use play one shot and we'll pass in the clip so what play one shot does is whatever clip you pass it it'll play it once it won't loop it and the benefit of this is it seems to act as if it's its own separate object when it's playing so if we passed in two audio clips immediately after one another the second wouldn't actually overwrite the first we'd actually hear both audio clips at the same time which is perfect because we can then reuse this for when we're shooting, if an enemy shoots, if an enemy explodes, if our shield gets damaged, anything like that, we can just call this one method. Next up, we want to update our battle music delay. So to do that, we'll create a local float and we'll call this delay time. And we'll set that equal to whatever the integer is that we've passed in times our delay tick and we do want to make sure that we can cap our upper and our lower limits here so what we'll do we'll check if delay time is less than 0.2 for example we'll just set delay time equal to 0.2 similarly for the upper end we'll check again if delay time is greater than one and if it is we'll set delay time equal to one and then right at the very end, we'll just set instance dot delay equal to our delay time. And that brings us on nicely to our final method, which is our battle sound core routine. 
So what we're going to want to do, if we start this, we're going to want to create a while loop. So we want this to loop while is playing is equal to true. And all we're going to do, we're going to add a yield statement because as you should remember by now, every core routine needs a yield statement. We're going to yield return new, wait for seconds and we'll pass in our delay. After we've waited for that fraction of a second, we'll get a battle music source and we'll just play it. Because in the inspector, when we've set this up, we're going to tell the battle music source what its audio clip is and we aren't going to change that. So now that we've got our script completed, we can go over into Unity and we can start setting up our audio manager. So what are we going to need? We're going to need one more manager script. One more manager game object, rather. And we'll call this audio manager. We'll pop this with the rest of them. And we'll drag and drop our audio manager onto it. Now, as you can see, all we need to set up in here is our two audio sources. And we can attach these audio sources to our manager. So we'll add one audio source and another audio source. So we'll drag our top one into our battle music and our bottom one into our sound effects and drag in our alien move audio clip into our battle music source audio clip. We don't want either of these playing when we start the game, so we'll uncheck play on awake and we want to make sure that neither of them are looping. We'll also bring down the volume of our battle music just so it's not too in your face and that should be that completed for now so we can check that this back uh, this battle music is actually working and the way we'll go about doing this is first of all we'll go into our game manager and when we back out of our game so when we've already been playing and we leave we want to make sure that we stop the music so we'll call audio manager dot stop battle music as simple as that we also want to make sure that when a new wave spawns we actually pause that battle music for just a little bit so what we're going to do we're going to set audio manager dot stop battle music at the start and then after our three seconds have passed we'll set audio manager dot play battle music again now, if you've already noticed this, well done, but at this point, when we start a new wave, a delay is already going to be quite a low number because we should have ended up with at least one alien left before we spawn a new wave. So we just want to make sure that we can reset this. So we'll just call audio manager, update battle music delay, and we'll set this back to one, our maximum. And the final thing we need to do for uh, battle music is every time we kill an alien, we want to recalculate that delay. So what we can do inside of our alien script in our kill method, as long as it's after we've removed it from our alien master all aliens list, we can call audio manager dot update battle music delay and we'll pass in our alien master dot all aliens count so now that should automatically update the speed in which that plays so i think we should be ready to test this let's have a go we should hear nothing when we start that's a good sign replay the game that's quite fast okay why is it going that fast at the start what we should be able to do actually is inside of uh, play battle music, we'll set instance dot delay equal to one. Because whenever we call play battle music, we're calling it from when we spawn a new wave. So we're always going to want it to be at its maximum point. Let's try this one more time. And that's working now. So if we go ahead and do a little bit of shooting. We can already hear it going slightly faster. Ooh, that's getting tense. I 
think we could actually move our enemies down a little bit faster. Ooh. And we've got one left, come on. And we stop. And we start again. Perfect. So now the final thing that we've got to do is we've got to take use out of that uh, play sound effects method. Now the way that we can do this is inside of all of our other scripts where we actually want a sound effect to trigger we can just call that method from that script. So let's take our player for example. We open up player. Inside of our shoot method we're going to want a shooting sound effect. So what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to, inside of our inspector, have a public audio clip, and we'll call this shoot SFX, shoot sound effect. And then when we shoot, we'll instantiate the bullet, and then I'll call audio manager dot play sound effect, and I'll pass in my shoot sound effect. And it should be as simple as that. So if we have a look, if we go over to our player, we see we have our shoot sound effect, and I have a friendly laser to put in there. So now if I play my game, every time I shoot, I should get a little laser sound effect. And I do. And you can see already this is looking a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw in all of these sound effects in the exact same way as I just did with the player script. And then we can have a look at exactly what this game's looking like. So there we go. I think I've managed to attach all the relevant audio clips. The way that I did it, I just went through my list of sound effects that I had and then went to that corresponding script and added that sound effect in where it needed to go. So let's play the game and have a look how this is going. We spawn in, we can shoot. Have it. As you can see this is already looking fantastic now. Sorry, I've gone a bit quiet now because I'm having fun. <laughs> okay, I've had enough of that now. <laughs> so I hope this explained how audio is actually extremely simple, but as you can see, it's very important that those sound effects are right, the music's right, and everything works seamlessly. And the good thing about that audio manager script is you can just drag and drop that out into another project and that play audio clip method will work everywhere. So I hope you've learned something in this video. We are coming very close to the end of this tutorial. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to create the shop menu and the upgrades. We're also going to obviously add those few sound effects in there as well. And that'll also need to change our save script as well. So we're that close to the end of the series now guys, come on, you need to watch that next video. So I'll see you over there.